sustainability has been an often mentioned goal of more and more businesses, nonprofits, and governments. However, measuring the degree to which an organization is being sustainable can be difficult. John Elkington, the famed British management consultant and sustainability guru, strove to measure sustainability by encompassing a new framework to measure performance in corporate America. This accounting framework, called the triple bottom line, went beyond the traditional measures of profits, return on investment, and shareholder value to include environmental and social dimensions. So, what is the triple bottom line? What are those three dimensions and how to measure them? Are there any real-world examples? What about its benefits and limitations? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. What is the triple bottom line? The triple bottom line, or TBL, suggests that companies should commit to focusing as much on social and environmental concerns as they do on profits. A TBL seeks to gauge a corporation's level of commitment to corporate social responsibility and its impact on the environment over time. According to TBL theory, companies should be working simultaneously on three bottom lines. First, profit. Profit can mean more than just how much money a company makes. A company must ensure it earns its income in ethical, fair manners. This includes soliciting business partners and vendors with which it aligns philanthropically. It also defines how a company develops its strategy or financial operating plan. For instance, profit also ties to a company's responsibility to pay its lenders, creditors, and employees what is due to them, and to have a sense of financial responsibility for these obligations. Some users of the triple bottom line may also say profit refers to not only a company's profit, but the profit of those around the company. This specifically refers to the community in which the business operates. This may include 1. Ensuring the company is paying its fair share of local, state, or federal income taxes on a timely basis. 2. Making sure the company is fostering economic wealth within its community by shopping local or utilizing small businesses. 3. Committing to financially investing in the community through partnerships, developments, or corporate sponsorships. Second, people. In the context of the triple bottom line, people refer to every individual that is in touch with the company. This includes but is not limited to. 1. Employees. This means ensuring workers receive a fair wage in a safe environment that encourages professional development. 2. Vendors. This means ensuring a diverse set of suppliers is used and prioritizing small businesses or minority owners when appropriate. 3. Customers. This means ensuring customers have fair access to products and their feedback regarding equity or safety are considered. Traditionally, a company would prioritize investors or shareholders. The triple bottom line shifts the focus to individuals potentially not financially invested in the company, but still tangentially involved with its operations. Third, planet. The largest deviation from purely financial reporting relates to reporting on environmental impacts. Often, a company must be forced between a lower cost option or a more environmentally friendly alternative. A company may also choose between a less favorable alternative, for example, eco-friendly transit will likely be slower than aircraft. Instead of reporting a company's positive changes to the planet, it is often much easier to assess the impacts of the alternatives elected by the company. Imagine a company that redesigned its distribution channels to reduce its energy use, such an activity would be reported as saving a certain amount of greenhouse gas emissions. Section 2. Measurement. First, measuring profit. A company will still usually report company-wide net income as part of its triple bottom line. For this reason, profit is the easiest component of the triple bottom line to report, as it already has strong guidance. However, it may also report several other financial metrics which could include 1. Gross margin by geographical region to demonstrate consistent or equitable pricing across different demographic groups. 2. Historical federal income tax payments, demonstrating its effective rate. 3. Historical information of late payments or penalties as a demonstration of financial responsibility. 2. Measuring people. It is also referred to as social measures or social metrics. The people component of the triple bottom line may contain financial or non-financial measurements. Again, some may be stipulated by generally accepted accounting principles or other reporting rules, while others may be internally sourced data. Examples of measurements of people include 1. Average employee payroll to demonstrate livable wages that exceed local expectations for pay. 2. 
Average employee benefits per employee beyond pay to demonstrate the full benefit package per worker. 3. Employment demographics such as proportion of employees in different age, race, sexual orientation, or religious groups. 4. Vendor demographics such as businesses identifying as small businesses, LGBTQ-owned, veteran-owned, or minority-owned. 3. Measuring planet. Perhaps the most difficult triple bottom line component to measure is planet. As a company may need to know its existing impact as well as its eco-friendly impact, measuring impacts to the planet may require the most expertise or effort. Common environmental measurements include the following. 1. Reductions in greenhouse gas emissions based on the difference between former processes and forecasted changes in new processes. 2. Amount of waste generated in pounds, this may also include amount of recycled product over a period of time. 3. Amount of energy consumption. 4. Amount of fossil fuel consumption. Section 3. Real-world examples. First, DHL. The German logistics company, DHL, continues to work to make its delivery vehicles more fuel-efficient or run on alternative energy. The shipping giant gets 62% of its electricity from renewable energy. Also, the company uses bicycles for delivery in several European countries. This would help DHL lower its carbon dioxide emissions by 152 metric tons annually. DHL also supports UN disaster management efforts, works towards education, and practices a host of many other social initiatives. Second, Ben & Jerry. Ice cream brand Ben & Jerry's has a long history of supporting social and environmental issues. In 2012, the company became a certified B Corporation, a designation that demonstrates that it's meeting high standards of performance when it comes to things like employee benefits, charitable giving, and good supply chain practices. Recently, the company has committed to goals that focus on improving racial equity at work as well as piloting new schemes at its dairy farms, aimed at dramatically reducing their environmental impact. Third, North Face. Outdoor Clothes Company, the North Face, puts sustainability at the heart of its business practices. It supports this through four actionable commitments. To develop circular systems to recycle previously owned clothes and reuse raw materials. To use 100% responsibly sourced fabrics. To work with retailers and suppliers to reduce their environmental footprint and to eliminate single-use plastic packaging. Section 4. Benefits and Limitations. Now let's go over the benefits and limitations of the triple bottom line. The benefits include the following. First, reduce energy consumption and carbon footprint by focusing on the environment. Second, higher employee retention rates by making the workplace more pleasant for workers. Third, enhance brand perception and reputation by showing others the organization stands for more than just making profits. Fourth, improve productivity and reduced costs through sustainability efforts. Fifth, increase transparency and accountability of operations, potentially attracting new investors. However, the triple bottom line theory also suffers from some limitations. First, it is a vague framework, so there are no specific guidelines to accurately measure TBL. Second, it is difficult to reach a global worldwide agreed standard and have all companies abide by that standard. Third, some business leaders may reap the social benefits of claiming they follow the triple bottom line framework without any actual effort. Section 5. Final words. The triple bottom line suggests that companies should commit to focusing as much on social and environmental concerns as they do on profits. Nowadays, more and more companies want to follow this approach. But the pressure from shareholders and budget limitations restricts many companies from limiting their TBL involvement. However, with increased awareness and global pressure, slowly, this is going to be the practice in years to come. Hence, businesses should start preparing themselves to meet these changes in advance. Alright, that's all for today's topic. If you have any questions regarding this video, please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.